Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ English, your favorite UPSC platform. Let's talk about the Olive Ridley turtle population. You may have heard about them many, many times in the news before. The fact is that despite so many efforts by the government to protect these species, today also they experience a decline. Yes, they are vulnerable, they are quite endangered. And therefore, this place called Guhagar in Maharashtra is witnessing a new change. There are some people, some activists in Guhagar, who are now manually entering the beaches and trying to protect the eggs of these species. So let's see, what is the olive ridley turtle species all about? Why are they so vulnerable? Has the government done anything to save them? And what is Guhagar doing that might make a difference in the future? Now, talking about the species of olive ridley, they are the most abundant of all sea turtles found in the world. And they are also the smallest ones. These turtles are carnivorous and they get their name because of the unique olive green color of the carapace or the shell that they have. Now, let's understand that there is a very important phenomena associated with them. It could be asked in the UPSC prelims and this is known as the Aribada. Now, Aribada is a concept where the olive ridley turtle females do a process of mass nesting. So many, many females of the species, they come, gather on the beach at the same time and lay their eggs. So although they are quite abundant across the world, but owing to many anthropogenic causes, to their, their population is in decline. Talking about where do they exactly live? Then these olive ridleys inhabit warm waters, the warm ocean currents of Pacific Atlantic Indian Ocean. And it is Odisha's Gahir Matha Marine Sanctuary that's known across the world as the largest colony of breeding animals of sea turtles. So do remember the name. It is Gahir Matha in Odisha. Now, alongside, there are certain unique aspects to this population of Olive Ridley. One thing is that they are not only carnivorous. Some of them also have both plants and animals. That makes them omnivorous as well. Now, they are also very solitary creatures. They usually prefer being in the open sea area. These turtles spend all their lives in the ocean water itself. And no wonder today rising marine pollution is also quite a cause of concern when it comes to their safety. They often migrate over 1000 kilometers just for feeding and mating behavior. So within one year, they move more than 1000, 1000 kilometers away. And uh, talking about their status when we talk about how safe are they today then as per the international union of conservation of nature which releases its red list periodically to just tell us the figures of those plants and animals which are endangered or vulnerable or they are almost on the brink of extinction We're talking about the olive ridleys these are categorized as vulnerable but then we also have the wildlife Protection Act of India 1972. Here in the Olive Ridleys are categorized under Schedule 1, which means they are quite unsafe and they need the highest level of protection by the government. Similarly, talking about the scythe, which is a convention that bans, it prohibits any trade in endangered species. Under site list, it comes under Appendix 1, which means no international trade is permitted in the Olive Ridley population. Now, when we talk about India and where do the olive ridleys usually inhabit India? So, this is Odisha. We, all, we already spoke about the Gahir Matha, the globally largest habitat. Then, apart from that, it is also the Rushi Kulya. Rushi Kulya is again a major site for these animals. And then comes the Devi River Mouth. This is also a major nesting ground for them. Talking about Andaman Nicobar, yes, it also houses certain areas which are a nesting site for these animals. Alongside, we have the Gujarat coast, besides the Lakshwadeep Islands. Now, in Lakshwadeep Islands, people say that not only are olive ridleys frequently reported, but also the size of these turtles is quite smaller than the usual size observed anywhere else in India. So, all these happen to be critical habitats then. And then, why are these olive ridleys so threatened? What are those anthropogenic causes which has caused them today to reach the brink of vulnerability? Now, we often know that olive ridley turtles is known for being a food source for many people. So therefore, not only are they killed, 
They are poached for food, but also for leather and their eggs, for the shells. Many times it is due to marine pollution. It is due to contamination, metallic contamination, oil spillages in the oceans. We talk about microplastic pollution. All these including fishing nets, the dumping of polythene, garbage, all that also chokes these turtles because it's killing their habitats one after the other. Talking about fishing trawlers, now over-exploitation of seawater for fishing, poaching, often creates the rule which says we cannot fish 20 kilometers within a marine sanctuary, but then that's not followed to the spirit. Many times we see active fishing, active sea hunting going on in areas that are actually marine sanctuaries. So which also means that it completely destroys the habitat of these turtles. It can cause them injury. It sometimes cause them completely dead. And another thing is that in the last few years, many times, whether it's Gahir Matha or whether it's Maharashtra, Gujarat coast, news has come that there are multiple dead bodies, carcasses of these unique olive ridleys scattered all across the beach. As the picture shows here, these disturbing sites have become very common. So therefore, the government is now highlighting that protecting the olive ridley is not just about creating standard protocols, but community action today becomes very, very important. So what has the Indian government really done to protect this unique species? One thing is that long back, during the 1980s, we introduced something that's called Operation Olivia. It was an initiative taken by the Indian Coast Guard. The purpose was to protect olive ridleys as they collect in the Gahir Matha region and many other places along Odisha coast for breeding and nesting. And this is usually happening in the winter months of November, December. Now, unfortunately, this is also the peak tourist season. So therefore, under Operation Olivia, the habitats of these turtles had to be segregated. It also tries to catch people who are indulging in unlawful activities like trolling in areas which are marine habitats. Then comes the mandatory use of turtle excluder devices, the TEDS. This is all about a step towards reducing accidental killing of olive ridleys, initiated by the government of Odisha. It is now mandatory for all the trolls to use turtle excluder devices. It is specially designed with an exit cover so that turtles are able to escape even if unfortunately they get caught up in the fishing net. Then comes tagging. The tagging of endangered olive ridley could also be a wonderful way to make sure that we know the amount, the number of them who are prevailing, so we can have a track on their population. For example, using a non-corrosive metal, which doesn't harm the turtle, we could tag them so that scientists are aware of their movements. Scientists can capture their situation in their unique habitats to know more about their species reproduction, feeding, and all that critical information. The more data we have, the better policy making can be done. Now, in news today is the Guhagar, an area in Maharashtra where for the first time we are seeing a unique community action. So people and activists, wildlife protection activists, who are working towards saving the olive ridleys are now doing a unique thing. They are collecting the eggs of these turtles, incubating them in protected reserved hatcheries so that accidentally no stray animal or no human interference is able to damage them. After the hatch, the activists are collecting them in tubs, in huge containers full of water and sand, and then they just release them slowly along the coast of the Arabian Sea. From there, the turtles can then crawl into the sea and have a protected life. So therefore, more such community actions can mean wonders to protect a species which is known across the world. But India is blessed to have certain such areas where they are found in abundant numbers. So now on to the prelims question. It says, consider the following statements about olive ridley turtles. One, the olive ridley are classified as vulnerable under the International Union of Conservation of Nature, red list. Second, they are known for a unique phenomena. That's a nesting phenomena called aribada, where thousands of female turtles come to the shore and lay their eggs together. Third, in India, the Gahir Matha Beach in Odisha is the world's largest nesting ground for olive ridleys. So which of these statements do you think is or are valid? You can post your comment. If you want to discuss, share your opinion, any 
sentiment about Olive Ridley or the wildlife protection in general, that this is the right space. You can leave the thread here. You can post your comment and we can pick up on that discussion. And if you enjoy such short contents, then do like, share and subscribe Study IQ English. Thank you.